Hi, it's me, RP. Now, if you are a motorcycle enthusiast visiting Singapore for the first time, one thing you'll kind of notice about the motorcycles here are that almost every single bike seems incredibly modern, even the ones used by the working class, delivery men, which would understandably boggle the mind of any foreigner, be they from a developed country like the UK or Germany, to even developing places like India and Vietnam. How is it that no one here in Singapore keeps an older, cheaper motorcycle around, and of all groups of people, the working class? Isn't Singapore the playground of the ultra-rich and wealthy who enjoy collecting classic automotive playthings? Where have all the 85 GSX-R 750s or original Katanas or Ducati 916s gone? Now, let, let us make a few things clear about the motorcycle community in Singapore. Singapore may be a culture where motorcycles aren't highly regarded, unlike in Italy or Germany or even Japan. However, the Singaporean motorcycling community are on average a far smaller and more passionate group about their hobby, far more than so-called car guys over here. Singaporean motorcyclists in general have great appreciation for these machines and as the average quality of life here is relatively high compared to many places in the world, they are machines that many riders here can afford to some extent, even as working class individuals. Many bikes that are now considered iconic works of art have at some point been bought by somebody and registered for use in Singapore like the original 1958 Super Cup, those were very common back then. 1969 Honda CB750s, those were pretty common as well. 1972 Kawasaki Z1s, uh, 1985 Suzuki GSX-R750s, the 1992 Honda CBR900 RR Fireblade, or the 1994 Ducati 916. But unlike many countries where motorcycles and their heritage is something enthusiasts are able to legally preserve with much ease in private collections and museums, it is not the case here in Singapore, and here's why. Now, while Singapore is like every other country in the world where vehicles are required to be registered and plated for road use, there is one thing most countries do not require that Singapore does. All vehicles in Singapore have to be registered and plated before they are even allowed to be operated anywhere on the island, with the exception of showroom vehicles that only registered dealers may keep in specific compounds. These include cars and motorcycles that will never see road use like track and trail machines, as well as display pieces, assuming you are wealthy enough to buy a motorcycle for the sole purpose of being decorative artwork. And unlike most countries in the world, once a vehicle has been deregistered, either because the owner is no longer willing or able to maintain it, it cannot be allowed to remain in Singapore or re-registered under someone else and has to either be scrapped or exported to use dealers in the rest of the world. Most often, the latter if in good condition. This fact alone means that many perfectly serviceable bikes in good condition never stay in Singapore long enough for them to eventually be seen as iconic classics. But why would enthusiasts in Singapore send their perfectly serviceable motorcycles to be exported in the first place, considering the relatively high wealth of individuals here? Simple, it's taxes. Singapore runs on a 10-year registration cycle, heavily tied to our proprietary COE system. And alongside that, there is this thing called the road tax. The road tax is basically a tax levied on vehicle owners according to vehicle type and engine capacity as a way to collect revenue that would theoretically be used to fix problems caused by vehicle emissions from IC engines. And by the way, vehicles that are electric are not exempt from road taxes because the electricity in Singapore comes exclusively from burning fossil fuels as well. 
However, once a vehicle of any type is over 10 years old, the road tax and owner has to pay increases by 10% over the base amount for his vehicle category. And that goes all the way to 50% more by the time the vehicle is 14 years and older. This metric by itself, together with the increased cost of maintaining older bikes due to the availability of spare parts, highly incentivizes owners of machines to deregister their bikes for a new one. However, before 2018, it was still common for riders to bear the additional cost to keep certain high-value motorcycles going in their stable, compared to car owners whose additional road taxes were comparatively higher. However, there are systems in place where the yearly taxes you pay on old motorcycles and cars could be reduced to more manageable levels. Q, the classic and vintage vehicle schemes. Classic vehicles need to be older than 35 years old when an owner requests for the scheme to be applied to their car or motorcycle and to be made before 1940 in the case of vintage vehicle schemes. However, the problem is in attempting to secure that status to begin with. Cars and motorcycles attempting a conversion to the classic and vintage schemes have to be sent for an inspection to ensure they are in impeccable mechanical condition and continue to pass smoke tests, which is not an easy hill to get around depending on the vehicle in question. And these inspections continue every single year just like a regular vehicle would have to go through. However, a vintage vehicle can only be used outside its designated storage address for 28 days in the calendar year, while classic vehicles have 45. This essentially means after continuing to pay your slightly reduced taxes, sending your car or bike for yearly inspections and keeping them in tip-top shape as well as having to register ahead the days you want to ride or drive your vehicle with the authorities, all you get is an overglorified car park statuette. It is no wonder that few but the most dedicated bike enthusiasts are willing to grit their teeth to ensure a piece of art and history stays in Singapore to be appreciated by other younger enthusiasts who may not have been lucky enough to have seen them in person during the bike's heyday. Hey there everyone, RP here. If you are enjoying what you see and would like to support me and my motorcycling channel, do help me out by heading over to my store to get a t-shirt, mugs or stickers, what have you. Links are in the description below and let's get back to the show. Now, remember when I said that before 2018, it was still common for riders of older motorcycles to continue paying the higher taxes to keep them. Well, in April of 2018, the National Environment Agency of Singapore announced that motorcycles and only motorcycles made before July 2003 would be banned in Singapore entirely by 2028, as older machines contributed far more to pollution. Of course, there were caveats. You could still continue paying nearly the same amount in taxes on a yearly basis and switch to the aforementioned vintage and classic schemes. However, this meant that the pool of owners whereby the notion of keeping a pristine vintage bike around became incredibly small because it no longer was a practical form of collection. If you were not independently wealthy to own not only one of these machines as well as the private storage space for them in land scarce Singapore, it became nearly impossible. On top of that, there were incentives provided by the government to ensure that these bikes were either sent to the scrapyard or exported overseas. 3,500 Singaporean dollars would be given to owners who did so by 2023. 
this meant that wealthy collectors in Singapore who may have been able to, over time, source and weed out the gems from the truly unsalvageable machines were now competing against the deregistration carrot that could be paid out instantly. Now, were the measures justified? On a personal level, I think pledging to reduce emissions is a good thing and I've been a proponent for electric motorcycles in order to have a compromise of both worlds. However, considering Singapore's population of 140,000 motorcycles in comparison to the 650,000 cars here, it feels like a lip service move targeted at a very specific demographic without actually achieving anything. Considering how our electricity production is and will continue to be based on burning fossil fuels within the foreseeable future, with absolutely no push for renewables or encouraging anti-consumerism behaviors that would actually have a larger environmental impact. However, what is a fact is that the automotive heritage of Singapore's past in the 60s to 80s that had been waning during the country's financial boom of the 90s and post-millennium now has the final nail in the coffin.